Major Yehor Chechirinda, a serviceman of the armed forces of Ukraine, noted that the Kremlin was directly involved in the conflict between the owners of Wildberries. The shooting took place in the office of the Wildberries Marketplace Company, which sells various goods. The value of this company before the war was about $13 billion. It operates in 10 countries except Russia. It has two owners, a man and a woman, Tatiana and Vladislav Bakalchuk. They began to sort out their relationship with each other, but what is important is that the Kremlin was directly involved in this conflict. The Kremlin decided to merge this company with another one and create a Russian Amazon, explained Chechirinda on the Espresso TV channel. According to the Ukrainian Armed Forces Major, billionaire and Putin's friend Suleiman Kerimov introduced Tatyana Bakalchuk to Putin. Putin approved the merger and the creation of a new company, but Tatyana's husband, Vladislav Bakalchuk decided that he did not want the merger and wanted to keep his share. Interestingly, he did not go to court but turned to Ramzan Kadyrov to help get his business back. Kadyrov hired a combat unit of Chechen fighters and his wife Tatiana, for her part, hired an Ingush private security firm to guard the office. Recently, there was an armed conflict between Chechens and Ingush, which resulted in the deaths of two Ingush guards, seven injuries, including two police officers. This caused a huge scandal. In other words, there was a shooting in the center of Moscow and Chechens stormed the Ingush. All the participants in the conflict were taken to the police and many criminal cases were opened, but all were released. According to the new law of the Russian Federation, all the detainees, mostly Chechens, because they were the attackers, have now asked to go to the so-called special military operation to the front in Ukraine, said Chechirinda. Yehor Chechirinda came to the conclusion that the shooting in the center of Moscow is a criminal drama about the future of Russia, when businessmen in case of any conflict do not go to court but appeal to Kadyrov or Kerimov. The Ukrainian Armed Forces Major also added that the story continued in Ingushetia, where the national shame of the Ingush was not forgotten when Kadyrov agreed with Putin to exchange his territories. Chechen and Ingush leaders met in Moscow to discuss the shooting. They are still sorting things out. State Duma deputies, who are criminal authorities, met at the Aurora Hotel in Moscow. This story will obviously continue. I think that it significantly weakens the Russian authorities and ignites a new flame of conflict in the North Caucasus, emphasized Chechirinda. The U.S. military struck a number of Houthi targets in Yemen on Friday, going after weapon systems, bases and other equipment belonging to the Iranian-backed rebels, a U.S. official confirmed. U.S. aircraft and ships struck Houthi strongholds, according to the official. The exact number of targets was not yet available as the mission was just ending. According to the Houthi media, seven strikes hit the airport in Hodeida, a major port city, and the Kathiab area, which has a Houthi-controlled military base. For more strikes hit the Sayana area in Sana'a, the capital, and two strikes hit the Damar province. The strikes come just days after the Houthis threatened escalating military operations, targeting Israel after they apparently shot down a U.S. military drone flying over Yemen. And just last week, the group claimed responsibility for an attack targeting American warships. The officials spoke on condition of anonymity to discuss details not yet publicly released. The rebels fired more than a half dozen ballistic missiles and anti-ship cruise missiles and two drones at three U.S. ships that were traveling through the Bab el-Mandeb Strait, but all were intercepted by the Navy destroyers, according to several U.S. officials. Houthis have targeted more than 80 merchant vessels with missiles and drones since the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza started last October. They have seized one vessel and sunk two in the campaign that has also killed four sailors. Other missiles and drones have either been intercepted by a U.S.-led coalition in the Red Sea or failed to reach their targets, which have included Western military vessels. The group has maintained that they target ships linked to Israel, the U.S., or the United Kingdom to force an end to Israel's campaign against Hamas in Gaza. However, many of the ships attacked have little or no connection to the conflict, including some bound for Iran.